Hello, and welcome back to Small Game Sunday. Get under that duvet, settle in as we go through today's games. Stomp Plonk is our first game, and as usual from Small Games is very unique. You take the perspective of an intrepid bard, exploring a world with this really distinctive art style. The entire style gives the sense of the best doodles, the sketches in the margins spilling forth off the page to create a delicious world to explore. Coming down to the docks, you're finding fishermen honking along to some unwritten song that fills any populated area of the world. It's a joy getting to the large city and being surrounded by crowds that you have to push through evokes walking down a busy path in a city, all accompanied by a particular beat of the town. This brings us to the musical aspect of the game. The game has this synchronicity that underpins any inhabited place. This background melody to the universe, a beat that everything steps to. You can play along with your lute, strumming to the music of the world. Now this fits better to the more musically minded of you, it sort of felt out of place to me, someone who could never quite sync up my song to everyone else's. It's still just fun to play that lute in front of people. It's kind of like the ocarina in Zelda, something that sounds good when you're playing out the songs that are pre-planned into the game for you, but every time you try and take it out for a jam yourself, well, my experience, it just always sounded horrible. But there is a solution to the game, a quest. The king wants you to gather his missing knights and bring them back by playing a tune that's scrawled onto his wall to them. There's this motivation that you get from that, but I actually just found exploring the world was enough for me. I ended up just getting a simplistic joy from exploring this mad world. Beheaded is a well-crafted little platformer that explores the ability of chucking your head at things. You play as Jack, a long dead thief, mysteriously resurrected. One of the obvious benefits of death and undeath in this manner is no longer being super dependent on your body to keep you alive. It's a puzzle platformer with tricky jumping sections and this sort of exacting feel that allows you to have a half a decent amount of control in the air. You move forward by traversing each of the rooms to get to the door at the end. If you die in any of these levels you have a series of buttons that you can try and press in a certain order to hold on to life, a system that I quite like that doesn't outstay its welcome here in this small game. It represents Jack desperately clinging to his skeletal corpse and to try and persist and move forward, and provides an alternative to the live system that is found in many platforming games. I don't think it has legs to be expanded out as it is, but it is a system that you could be playful with and actually develop further for a bigger game. Death in games is something we should consistently be rethinking and coming up with new ideas of how to progress through it. Just look at Dark Souls. The rooms quickly evolve away from just left to right platforming though, and put some puzzles in the way to make you really use your head, literally. As you progress through the game you get a series of different upgrades like a fire head and a heavy head and a ghost head. Not sure of the impetus for these upgrades, but they do let you have a series of interactions with the environment. But the puzzles themselves I would critique as saying they are a little more straightforward solutions, once you've figured out one it reuses that consistently without really remixing it. They never really stack into unique configurations, instead just being like, there's a rope I need to burn, I'll burn that rope and then move on. Meaning that it does become slightly repetitious as the game goes on. So the game does fall back on a bit of repetition, but the general design of the game is solid, and the background music is there just to pull you through the puzzles and creates a nice distraction away from the platforming. Again, I find like these smaller micro games much easier to recommend due to the scope and time investment. So it's worth checking out this game for sure. Now our final title. I have talked about the reasons behind doing these videos in the past, but I remember when I covered Resonance of the Ocean, I found what became this core imperative that I have used as motivation throughout. Finding impeccable intelligent design that whittled any excess away, leaving the perfect parts of the craft behind. This is instead of lamenting over sprawling games arranged by gangly teams, the head not knowing how to direct the hand, Instead we get these precise creations with perfectly specified premises. They have the space to be razor sharp, and that is Waste Eater. Taking place on a single screen representing a world made desolate by waste, the game much more represents a single set microplay than it does a full sprawling game world. The screen glows this radioactive orange that's reminiscent of a world consumed by waste. Waste implied to be left by the people of the world, enraptured with megalomaniacal self-destructive tendencies, letting everything go to shit. The solution? Well, not to control the waste, but to create waste eaters. 
beings who survive and thrive off eating leftovers of a technological society. Now, with these lofty goals, the game actually perfectly weaves this non-pretentious story. Instead, it becomes this well-written set of musings by the main character, spending his last moments chatting in a winding manner to an unresponsive bird. A creature only able to be there because the Waste Seasers were successful. They have cleaned the world, but they no longer have a way of surviving now. That was their fuel, that was their sustenance. As a game, you're just mostly clicking through text boxes, but you do get some multiple choice answers to some of the questions, allowing you to have some agency over the story. These points are sparse, but allow you to develop some flavour for our protagonist as he ruminates on his coming demise. The story of being created into a waste eater, and the fact that they never put a reversal process in, it was a suicide mission from the start. You can quickly see how society uses its people, and then is willing to discard them once done. Willing to see them as disposable pieces of equipment, that at its core dehumanises and gets rid of them when they're no longer required. The game taking place entirely on one screen gives it this sense of a play, and it carves out this singular space as one that must be able to explore an entire world and an entire history. The main character never moves far, his body becoming insipid and atrophied. There is no more ways to fuel him. Even after undertaking becoming a monster at the behest of society, there is no outreach and the only solution is to find a peaceful corner of the world to die in. I mentioned that the writing is not pretentious, instead it manages to tell us a lot about this person, about the journey that took them to where they are today, and the trials and tribulations about making the ultimate sacrifice for society that no longer sees them as a person. But the actual language that it uses to get us here is plain and simple. Having a humanising element to the monster, it tells us what happened to the world and gives us a series of short musings. Something that's really incredible when you consider that this game is only 20 minutes or so long. I really implore people to play this game, it's really an interesting insight to what games can do. Provide small visual clues to a world on a single screen and back it up with good writing, and you can manage to have something that undercuts some of the bloat that you get in larger games. That I occasionally adore, but it shows us a different side of the medium of what it can be, and is that not reason enough why you should play these smaller personal games? That's it for today's small games that you should certainly be checking out. I'm coming back off a little bit of an extended break and I may have to go on one again soon, depending on what life serves me up. Unfortunately I have a family member who is very ill, and that's my priority number one at the moment, but also having a creative outlet is really important to me as well. So I'll try and release when I can. I should have a couple of videos coming out in the next week or so, but beyond that I am taking it very much as it comes. Enough life waffle, thank you for watching, my name's been Billy, peace.